ringside right now, Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Dana Rosenblatt and Stu Taylor on Star Boxing. Coming to you tonight from Yonkers Raceway. And coming up, we got a terrific Southpaw righty matchup. The Southpaw, of course, being Marlon Haynes. He comes out of Washington, D.C. Aubrey Simignoni, the Orthodox style fighter, living in New York by way of South Africa, but really feels New York's his home right now. So one more kind of rivalry we have is this East Coast Washington, New York rivalry. One that hasn't been seen since the Senators left Washington and, and when they played the Yankees, wouldn't you say? You see their matchup there. Haynes coming in with a 7-1 and 2 record. Simignoni 12 and 2. And they're making his move from the horse walk is Marlon Haynes from the D.C. area, technically out of Hyattsville, Maryland. And uh, earlier today, he's a southpaw. We asked him, did he have trouble getting fights being a southpaw? Because that's usually the case. He had these thoughts. Fighting as a southpaw, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, lot of difficult things that happen as, as a, as a southpaw. There's a lot of guys that want to fight a southpaw. Well, we'll see how Simignoni does with it tonight, but as Haynes making his way into the ring, originally out of Guyana. Also being trained by former Olympian Charles Moody, member of the 76 Olympic team, fought up in Montreal. As we see referee Mike Ortega making his way to the ring. Now I'm sure getting ready there in the horse walk is Aubrey Simignoni out of South Africa with the 12-2 record. And uh, eight wins by way of knockout. Sibagnoni, on the other hand, what were his thoughts about having to match against the Southpaw, and how did he feel about the geographic matchup? His thoughts today as well. I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm so happy that he's a Southpaw person. That's what I've been looking for. And uh, because I know that the, you know, the PI guys in the right division, some of them are, 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 are Southpaws, so this is what I'm looking for. And plus, I want to learn all the styles. I want to learn all the angle so it's kind of like a great thing for him to come in as a southpaw at this point for me i feel like i'm representing new york like he's representing dc and uh you know this is my home this is my pick one i have to defend that all right well we'll see what kind of job aubrey sibignoni does defending his turf take a look there's marlon haynes in the green and there's sibignoni sibignoni's career started back in 92 was undefeated in his first six fights, had managerial problems, took off from 93 to 96. Back on track right now. Those two lone losses coming in very disputed circumstances, at least according to Sibagnoni. Six-round decision loss to David Lopez and a unexplained disqualification to Candy Robertson up in Oregon in September of 99. His last fight came in March against Joe Freitag. Tough Guy Freitag winning a six round decision. Haynes last fight this past April 28th. And he won a six round decision against Mambia Bakari. That was after he had his first professional loss against Michael McPhail. And we've given you all the information. You see the standing room crowd getting ready for this matchup. And we're going to get the official introductions from our ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for six rounds, and it's in a Walter Waite division. Our judges, Fred Yussi, Jim Pierce, and Luis Rivera. Our referee is Mike Ortega. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the green trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at 146 and one quarter pounds. This young man has eight wins, one loss, two draws with one knockout. From our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., Ladies and gentlemen, here is mighty Marlon Haynes. Haynes. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the white trim. He too weighed in at 146 and one quarter pounds. He has 12 wins, two losses with eight knockouts. He is a native of South Africa, and now making his home in the Big Apple of New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Aubrey Sibagnoni. Sibagnoni. Gentlemen, you want a good king fight? Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch him up. Best of luck. 
All right, Sibagnoni only found out about the southpaw situation with Haynes about three days ago, he told us. So he didn't get much southpaw sparring for this. We'll see if he does the traditional work of trying to throw the right hand lead Stu left to the body or if he just lets his jab do his talking for him. Well, uh, I'm thinking here, Annie, I was about to say two contrasting aspects. One uh, in terms of uh, Sibagnoni, who feels uh, a tremendous ties to New York, while Marlon Haynes doesn't feel that great allegiance to Washington. He's fighting on his own. The other is... Haynes, a boxer, and Sibignoni, a puncher. And uh, Haynes commented during the pre-fight interview that he's hoping to become a puncher, but if he can't, he can't. If it comes, it comes. We'll find out if it comes tonight. Eight knockouts for Sibignoni, only one for Haynes. Haynes said he's trying to work on getting more power. We asked him specifically what he was doing. He was a little vague about that aspect, but uh, said if it's got to be a decision, it'll be a decision. Interestingly enough, the book on Haynes was that he was a bit of a runner, and right now standing in front of Simonioni, somewhat taking the fight to him. We've got a classic feeling out first minute yeah. here. <laughs> not not this much is, going on here in the center of the ring. This is a real feeling out first minute. Nice right hand, Simonioni using the jab to set up the right hand lead. But Dana, if you haven't had enough sparring with right-handers it's got to be really awkward to try to throw that right hand and sometimes you feel like you're going to tip forward yeah it's uh it's, it's very difficult for a uh, right-hander to get in there with a south part and vice versa if if, if, if the south part hasn't consistently fought with uh south part and, right and what about the feet they're already yeah, stepping on and, each other's feet well there you go that's the main reason is because you're consistently stepping on the lead foot of your opponent or your opponent stepping on yours you can't move and, uh, you know, these are the things that have to be worked out when you're getting in the ring with the southpaw. And Sibagnoni, uh, you know, really is going to have to uh, deal with these things if he wants to mount much of an offensive attack against him. And I know this crowd here tonight, standing room only, they're going to have to deal with this crowd if they don't pick things up, too. Because they've seen a lot of action this evening. And... It's, it's, they're going to want a little bit more out of these, too. A couple it, of the boo birds are being heard already. It's a hard thing, and I think that the uh, the relative inaction so far in this first round is really due to the southpaw stance on the part of Haynes. Simonioni starting to open up a little bit right now. He's landed with the right when he's thrown it, but he's been very tentative about letting it go. Good idea for a tall guy like Simonioni, if, he, if he's having a difficult time with the southpaw stance, is to use the jab. The jab can be a range finder. A jab can be a punch that you can throw with, uh, you know, from a relative defensive posture and not risking too much. You throw it out there quick. You kind of feel, get a feel for where your opponent is, as Sibagnoni's doing right now, and then he could try to set him up for his bigger punch. His Other right thing, Sibagnoni, Sib very tall for this weight, almost six foot tall for 146 pounds. When you try to move in on him, he ties you up very well. And long that, arms and long body. And, the, and that jab will also change the tone of the fight. Well, there's the hammer, and we're going to change the tone of the first round. Very slow feeling out round. Round number two, scheduled for six, Aubrey Sibagnoni. He's in the black and white, green and white from Marlon Haynes. Haynes coming out of D.C. by way of Guyana. Seems like round and, one, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and Sibagnoni coming out of South Africa, now residing in New York. One feeling the rivalry, one not. Haynes been in this country six years. Sibagnoni, a little over eight. Nice body shot by Haynes, catches Sibagnoni's attention. Pays him back. Opening up just a little bit maybe here in round two. Well, both corners in the face of both fighters <laughs> saying, what, what are you guys doing here? Haynes oh. looking to establish his uh, left hand to uh, Sibagnoni's stomach, uh, which is a, a smart move with a taller right-handed fighter coming from the southpaw, and that that straight left hand comes straight in 
the midsection and is a uh, very large striking area on the part of Simon. Both fighters a little tentative and neither one really on target yet. Wanting to get the punches up from Mike Ortega to Marlon Haynes. One jab's not going to do it though for Simonelli. He's got to take a second jab and take a step in, I would think, Dana. I don't, I don't think he wants to just yet. Uh, he's, he hasn't really established a comfort level to the point where he wants to throw those power punches, step in with his right hand. He hasn't established that. Simonelli looks a little dry, too. I wonder how well warmed up he was prior to this fight. It's much better sweat breaking right now on Marlon Haynes than on Simonelli. Major difference if you look at them. But it's not reflecting itself in the fact that uh, Styles make fights or Styles may not make fights. And we'll see early on here if we're dealing with the latter issue. Distance shouldn't be an issue, though. Uh, Marlon Haynes, he's been six rounds three times. Six or more four times for Simonioni. Some very nice evasive tactics on the part of Haynes. Slipping those uh, punches on the part of Simonioni. Doing so very effectively. Both fighters, though, fighting a very, very cautious fight. And there's that tie-up that you see Simonioni do so well. If you're going to get on inside like that, he's going to tie you up. There seems to be an invisible barrier, excuse me, Arnie, for interrupting between them, where they, where they maintain just enough distance to, to continually miss those punches. Sounds like this are very hard to score. Very hard for the judges to score. Nobody's really doing anything to establish a, a, a definitive advantage. And do you score it then at that point on, on volume of punches thrown, whether they're made or not? Or do you score it on the guy who lands the one punch, as, and, and but he only threw one punch? Well, it's uh, really a decision to make on the part of the judge. Well, another round and another slow one in the books. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. Go, go to the criteria for yes. judging this. There's very little punching power. So do you want to go to leadership? Do you want to go to dominance? Uh, we're not seeing it really in any category in, in order to make any real differentiation between the two so far after two rounds. And I look at the score sheets around me, mine as well, and we both got the fight even, although, Stu, you gave the first round to Sibignoni as I did, and the second one to Haynes, and you got a flip-flop, Dana. I got a flip-flop. Which uh, gives really, you Really, yeah, I mean, really can show that... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of the scoring is, is uh, subjective, as boxing scoring is. And in fights like these, uh, the judges may see one thing and, and, and give the round to a fighter based on that one thing. Guys, based on these two rounds, this is as tough a fight as any I've had to score. Scheduled for six, that's Sibignoni, black and white. Green and white, Marlon Haynes. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. I don't think there's been six punches landed between the two of them. Southpaw righty matchup. Both fighters just getting their feet close enough to keep each other on the outside. Kane seems to be a lot more aggressive, though, this round. If you can call that aggression. And once he gets inside again, there's Sibignoni doing his patented tie-up. I don't think Haynes wants to feel the aggression on the part of Charles Moody when he goes back to his corner at the end of this round. Well, they're not much happier in Simonioni's corner. Simonioni's going to have to take that second step in. He's not going to be able to throw that right hand from the outside. It's just not going to land. Yeah, there's very, very little to talk about here. There's very little going on in that ring. So if it seems unusually quiet, <laughs> it's, it's a struggle to make any definitive statements. Crowd unusually quiet here, too, and uh, uncharacteristically respectful at this point for the lack of action here. Simignoni trying to draw Haynes in by sitting on the ropes. Doesn't make him pay, though, when he gets inside, and Mike Ortega not letting them fight an in-fight here. He's breaking them very quickly, Dana. I think he, he knows that uh, nothing's really going to be done from the inside, so he's breaking these guys, looking for a little action on the outside.
about 30 seconds to go here in the third. We're almost halfway done in this fight. And it's more like a shadow boxing warm up at this point. Well, it's just very difficult to break a style. It's very difficult to break habits. And neither one of these fighters are evidently that aggressive. Nice left hook drops in by Sibagnoni. Starts to move in with the right, starting to finish strong here, and down goes Haynes. Out of the blue that came. What a surprise. Just when you thought things were getting quieter, Haynes having a very good third round. Uh, I had Haynes winning this round up until this point. Gets dropped near the end. You should hear the bell. Well, in a six Charles Moody trying to revive his fighter a little bit here. Marlon Haynes never been stopped. Only has that one decision loss. That had to be a real shocker to Haynes. Nothing was happening in that round. And all of a sudden, we're going to look at that right hand that Simonioni lands. And there, that's the shot that he needed. It's the right hand that's going to do it against the southpaw. And as we mentioned, Simonioni only found out three days ago that he was fighting a southpaw. And at a point like that, if you're not used to just throwing the right-hand lead, let the left go first and set it up. Dana and Ani in a, in a six-round fight, a 10-8 round is a big round, and I'd put Simeone in, a, in the driver's seat here. Oh, he most Consequently, though, he might have lost. On some cards, he might have lost both of the first two rounds, so we don't know because we disagreed on them. <laughs> round four of a scheduled six round. There are Marlon Haynes on the floor at the end of the third. As a perfectly timed right hand coming off a left from Aubrey Sibagnoni drops him. And just uh, when the crowd was getting lulled to sleep and it looked like Haynes was coming in with a good round. Nice counter on the part of Haynes. Haynes landed a very nice right hook, counter right hook. Well, former Olympian Charles Moody in the corner of Haynes. Went wild between rounds. Honey, you'd think uh, logic would say that a knockdown would produce some more aggression on the part of the fighter that landed the punch that produced a knockdown. Sibagnoni has uh, yet to produce that aggression. I'm from the school like you are. I think if you got a guy hurt, jump on him. On the other side of the coin, it was sort of that lull the guy into it that got him where he got to at the end of the third when he dropped Haynes. Maybe it's a strategy. Yeah. Well, Maybe he feels that's the way to go again. He's still not that comfortable necessarily with the southpaw style. Looks like we're reverting a little bit back to rounds one and two here when we expected the tempo to be picked up based upon that knockdown. It's not happening. Well, we're basically reverting to the tempo minus the last 10 seconds of, of the third <laughs> round when, when the knockdown came. And that at the end of the day, that may be the difference in this fight. A slip uh, by, uh, by right, Haynes, but right there with that to keep his balance. What that was is Haynes looking to come forward with a jab and stepping on the foot of Sibagnoni. Sibagnoni pulled the foot back. That, these are the types of things you see when southpaws fight right handers. And as Bruce Trampler would say, they also, famous matchmaker, top rank under a minute to go here, would say they also make stinko fights. Well, about a 10% knockout rate in fights for Haynes, and it doesn't look like that'll increase after this fight. Where is that punching power? Or does he just not have it? But it's going to be an even tougher fight to call because he's in this round. Sibagnoni not taking control here after the knockdown in the third, letting Haynes back into the fight big time. And like we said, it could be conceivable, because we're seeing these rounds close, that Haynes could have won the first two. Honey, I agree. And could win the fourth. Absolutely so. agree. What it did was, was give Sibagnoni an opportunity to take control of this fight, and he hasn't exercised that option. Certainly let Haynes back in here as Haynes taking the fourth round.
Very animated Charles Moody trying to kick start his Guyanan fighter. It's Round be five, scheduled for six. Aubrey Sibignoni, black and white, green and white. Marlon Haynes, only one knockdown in the fight. That was oh. back in the third. Sibignoni landed that landed a long good shot right there. hand. That's, it's it's must puzzling have been a, why he doesn't go back to that and use that more frequently. There must have been some words from both corners that were very strong because there's a lot more action already oh. in the first 20 oh. seconds here than there was in the first four rounds, exempting the knockdown. Sibagnoni Haynes landed. now trying to get into a street brawl with Sibagnoni, and that might be to Sibagnoni's favor because he's certainly the heavier punching of the two. Haynes thinking better of it right now. Tempo slowing down again after a fast start here in this round. Simonioni starting to feel comfortable with dropping that right off the left again. He's looking for that long right hand. I think he's, he's banking on that to be the punch of Winston's fight for him. You know, it's often a case of wanting to do something, but you just can't do it. And in the case of Marlon Haynes, he'd like to exhibit some punching power, and it's, it's been minimal. And again, it's very screwy fight to score going into oh. this round. I got Sibagnoni up 38-37, but in rounds, totally even. Any reaction from the peanut well, gallery? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting here. No, I don't want to say it all night. We've been I almost in 100% agreement. I'm uh, getting defensive I, I, here. I've got Sibioni up as well, 38-37. I thought it was taking you a long time to add up the score Oh, sheets. no, 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 Arnie. I was waiting for Dana's comment, and I thought I'd jump in. I'll still a not, pregnant not, pause. Not exactly a mathematician. However, uh, I do have Sibioni up by one as well. Well, as usual, the three Rosen agree. <laughs> Rosen Taylor. I still want a confirmation of the rumor that the Guardia offered you money to change your name to Rosen Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the consistency here. Sibagnoni doing doing more at this point. I think he's got nice he's left got Haynes, yeah, He's got Sibagnoli. Haynes aware of the of the longer punches. He knows that those punches can hurt him, and he's really and what and what Sibagnoni does very well. One of the best things in his arsenal is the tie-up. You get inside <laughs> on him, you're not going anyplace. He's just his arms are too long and he's too tall. That was what the Joe Fry was at the, his last fight with Joe Frytag, and it was like a Lamada Robinson type of fight. But every time Frytag came bullying his way in, he got tied up. Crowd a little bit annoyed about it, but he won every mm -hmm. round. In this in this fight, again, we could see a situation where the crowd would be annoyed with the lack of action. Oh, nice right drops in again by Sibagnoni. Punctuate the end of the fifth. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. We've got Simonioni up by two. Sixth and final round. Aubrey Sibagnoni, black and white, green and white. Marlon Haynes, and Sibagnoni gets rocked back there. There's only been one knockdown in the fight. And that's when Haynes went down in the third, got saved by the bell. And now he's coming out like a man, it seems to me, that feels he needs a knockout fire. to win this fight. Yeah, I see it in his eyes, and I see that tenseness and that dedication. But it's, it's almost like Haynes doesn't know how to do it. I think you, you, you can't really teach an old dog new tricks and Sibagnoni or I'm sorry Haynes is the type of fighter that likes to counter likes to be defensive can't be offensive at a time now in this fight where he needs to be offensive well sure. right now though I've got the fight 40 very close it's 48 46 on my card Same obviously here. unofficial yep. going into this round Sibagnoni gives away this round and He'll things are just one round. other round tighter you can wind up with a draw or he might even go home with a loss here right Haynes fights like I used to play ping pong. Defensive? Which, very defensive. <laughs> you played ping pong <laughs> defensively? Yeah. And won. <laughs> A defensive ping pong that? player. I've never heard of that. We've learned new things tonight. 
Well, I would say at this point, both corners must have told their fighters if they didn't tell their fighters that they need this round to win, then they gave the wrong instruction. Sibignoni not fighting aggressive enough here in the sixth to pull it out. And uh, Haynes not necessarily taking advantage of the lack of aggression from Sibignoni. Interesting but, to see how the judges score this one. Assuming it goes the distance, and it looks like it will. A little more than a minute to go in the fight. Simignoni still trying to land that big right from the outside that managed to put Haynes down in the third and also rocked him again in the fifth. First two rounds, probably two of the most boring rounds we've seen in star boxing history. <laughs> And uh, things picked up in the third round. Haynes having a very good third till he got caught by Sibignoni. Sibignoni not taking advantage of it in the fourth, but coming back with a very strong fifth and a very lackluster sixth here as we got 40 seconds to go in the fight. Very aerobic confrontation here. Very little contact, but a lots of aerobic exercise. Yeah, these guys are moving around. They're bouncing around. They're giving head feints and throwing jabs, but oh, a lot of air. Well, I see Harold Letterman sitting at ringside. He'd be explaining effective aggression to us right now. This is but not, is this, this is effective, not though? It's the b a few boos coming right now. An attempt by both fighters, but just it's just not happening. Sibagnoni landing the shots, but is he doing enough here in the last 10 seconds to pull this round out? He's landed the shots, but the volume of punches coming from Haynes. And there you go. Both fighters raising their hands, congratulating each other's corners. Very tough last round to score. It'll be interesting to see. I gave it to Sibagnoni only because he landed the more telling blows. Volume, though, certainly in favor of Haynes. But the way I had it, I pulled it out at 58-55. Aubrey Sibagnoni. I got Sibagnoni winning at 57-56. Giving the last round to Haynes, then? I gave it to him, but I'll tell you, it was a tough one to score. Dana, how have you got it? Well, you're still adding? 58-55, Sibagnone. All right. The knockdown is really the difference in this fight, and uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the judges are going to see it that way. Well, we'll see. They're taking a lot of time going over the cards right now. Sibagnone seemed confident in his corner. Uh, knowing that they're on the road, not the uh, same confidence right now in the corner of Marlon Haynes. And I think, Dana, what you're saying is right. I think the 10-8 the round back in round three where Sibagnoni dropped Haynes and the, 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 is going to be the difference. But the amazing thing is, is Haynes was winning that round very handily after two lackluster rounds. Yeah, he, was, he seemingly was winning that round. The knockdown came right at the end of the round. And Usually a 10-8 round. Right. Oh, Remains to be seen what the judges have. What the judges could conceivably score that a 10-9. They could. I, I thought it was a, certainly a convincing enough knockdown as we take a look at it back action from round three. And it was a really good shot. And uh, if it hadn't come at the end of the round, the outcome of the fight might have been totally different at that point. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. Took a lot of times, though, to... Uh to add up the sheets, and I wouldn't be surprised if we hear a split decision from our ring announcer, who now has the official sheets, Ed Darian. From Yonkers Raceway here in Yonkers, New York, I've got the scoring, and here it is. Judge Luis Rivera scores 60-54, while Judge Jim Pierce, he has it 58-55. And Judge Fred UC he scores... 58-56. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Aubrey Sibagnani. Sibagnani. All right, a little wider than uh, we saw it on one of the cards, 60-54. to 54. That's a tough one to but figure. One of the things we need to point out there is they didn't give Sibagnani a 10-8 round. In, yes. that, in that judge, he gave every round to Sibagnani, which we didn't see it that way, but he didn't give him a 10-8 for the knockdown. 
58-55, 58-56 on the other cards. More or less how we saw the fight. And Aubrey Sibignoni will improve to 13-2. And, and uh, Marlon Haynes, he'll drop down to 7-2-2. Two two. More to come. Stay with us.